You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind and puppetry. Next stop, Animal Cracker Conspiracy. Don't expect a regular puppet show if you're coming to an Animal Cracker Conspiracy <laughs> show. Ian Gunn and Bridget Roundtree are the co-conspirators behind the puppet theater production of The Collector. We're trying to create a, a world, a world that has elements of the Victorian, elements of kind of Edgar Allan Poe, um, 1984. It's a dystopian world where there should be some connections to our reality, but a lot of it's just something that allows you to kind of go in with your imagination opened up and on. We definitely try and change people's idea about what puppetry is. I think most people assume puppetry is for kids, A, or it has something to do with the Muppets. The work of Animal Cracker Conspiracy challenges expectations, be it with shadow puppets. And it's just cardboard and the clear packing tape. So it looks like that when it's projected. Giant creations. And these puppets are super effective for spectacle because they're so big that you can see them coming from miles away. Or puppets created from trash. Shopping bag cut into little strips. You can see his elbow there. Are you looking at my elbow? And cardboard rolled up newspaper and masking tape that then has been painted with acrylic. And these heads, we oh. sculpted out of styrofoam, covered with yeah. masking tape, and then um, paper mache and then their eyes are just plastic beads. Beads. Hot glue. High tech. Maybe not high tech, but high concept. Animal Cracker Conspiracy is pushing the notion of what puppetry can be. If you can use it and you can tell a message and it's something outside of your body, then you're entering that kind of fabulous gray area that, that modern or contemporary puppetry is. To me, it's taking the material, which is an object, and animating that. So anima is to give something life. And there's a bit of alchemy involved in bringing inanimate objects to life. OK, I have a puppet that has one flat expression. How do I convey that he's scared or she's excited. So what do you do physically with your hands, with your movement, with your head, with your, you know, eyes, anything to do it yourself, embody it, and then go back and pick up the puppet and put that movement into the puppet. And when done right, it's magical. For the collector, the artists use puppets without moving mouths because they can be more eloquent on stage. Well, we won't be hooded completely, but we wear all black costumes and we have, we're gloved so you wouldn't see our hands. You know, the idea is for us to disappear. We wanted to explore tabletop puppetry. We wanted to figure out how we could combine video projection, tabletop puppetry, and a, and a giant toy theater and create a compelling narrative. To me, it feels like we're living in an age of um, hyper-materialism and that objects and things are very important to who we are as people and our self-worth. With the collector, I became really interested too in what happens when these objects also go away. You know, kind of looking at psychologically the, uh, the need to collect. A show that pushes boundaries needs a space that aspires to similar goals. Gunn and Roundtree found that venue literally around the corner from their University Heights home at Peter McConnell's Third Space. Uh, I mean, it's a very different concept. Um, it's, it's what I call a, a private club for the creative. In other words, the perfect place for an experiment with puppetry. We'd like to see it treated more on a level with theater, that you're going to see a play. Yes, it's going to be shorter. Mm -hmm. However, it should have every nuance and depth of a play that you might see at a local theater. I think people will love it and be surprised.